um, uh, what I'm proposing is um, uh, actually not necessarily uh, to destroy the hero's journey or to upend uh, our current civilization, although at times it feels like it's doing it all by itself. Um, I'm uh, uh, proposing that there is um, uh, an alternative, uh, one that is in the process of coalescing and rising, um, a, a, a different uh, kind of civilization that actually um, is capable of, of, uh, of, of coexisting with the old one, at least for a little while, uh, that can rise and allow for people ultimately to step off that uh, old civilization, which is in the process of, of destabilizing, even potentially crumbling. They could just step off as it lowers and this new one uh, rises. But it's going to take some awakening. It's going to take some uh, awareness, uh, uh, the ability for us to kind of feel uh, uh, for what is possible outside of the limitations that we're imposing with our current imagination, an imagination that was perpetuated, of course, by our, our mentors, the authorities, uh, our, our leaders. Um, uh, so what could that be like? And, and what are the stories we need to tell ourselves to get us there? Um, uh, this is where the collective journey uh, comes in. So while the hero's journey is kind of like this circle, uh, the collective journey is like a lightning bolt. Um, uh, collective journey narrative is everywhere almost at once. It has a beginning and an end, uh, but it also uh, can, can cover so much. It's, it's uh, uh, not linear um, and it's intense and it realizes what can only be imagined. Um, uh, so uh, collective journey narratives are omnidirectional. You can study them super closely. Um, uh, they can uh, vary themselves uh, uh, in, in multiple ways all at the same time. They're dialogue based. We can participate in collective journey narratives, which means we can change the story. Um, uh, and in fact, we can communicate directly with the storyteller. Collective journey narratives are porous. And the reason this model is coming into prominence all around the world is because uh, we have self-determination now because our voices can be communicated through the internet and social media. We can self-express, we can self-organize, we can empower one another. Um, so uh, when you talk about collective journey narratives, you are switching from you, meaning uh, an elite few communicating with the masses uh, and essentially uh, a defining their reality, to we, uh, the audience and the storyteller, propelling themselves forward and opening up possibilities. The traits of collective journey narratives include the fact that we don't have to be super special, unique uh, 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 beings that are somehow special enough to be heroes. The, pro the approach can be networked. We are uh, able to, to plug in and, um, and use collective intelligence to solve some of our problems. And it's built on knowledge abundance. Um, uh, it, it, expertise is, is wonderful and we, we will hire experts, but all of us should have access to the same kinds of information. At the end of the collective journey narrative, the hero wins because the hero um, uh, didn't have to be torn away from the community. Um, uh, they have forwarded a common cause. Uh, each member of the, uh, of the cast has stepped forward, done their piece, and stepped back. Uh, yes, there can be special people or point of view people and, and, and so forth, but um, uh, they're not necessarily... Uh, exalted above others. And of course, the community wins because it's not dependent on a lone person to save the day. Um, uh, yes, there can be heroic individuals, uh, but they can blend back into the community and the community was not dependent on some single entity to save it.